Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video which is actually episode 10 of Project R8. Now in previous videos I've dropped some hints that I really want to get down and clean the engine bay on Project R8. The reason for this is not like a normal car, it's got a glass window and it's on display so I'm pretty fastidious about cars with a normal bonnet having a decent engine bay but actually on this car it's even more important because people look at it probably more than the bodywork. And because it lived in Scotland I think it got a bit dirtier than it would have done being elsewhere. The engine from underneath looks pretty well sealed from the elements, but air has to get in and get out, and with that, so does dirt. So I'll show you where we're at. Now, I've already removed the trims on the left and right-hand side of the engine bay, and that's actually revealed probably twice the surface area and twice the dirt. So we can see the header tank for the coolant there, covered in dust. We can see the auxiliary air pump there. We can see this vacuum reservoir there. So yeah, a fair bit of cleaning to do. Pressure washing I think is going to be the only solution, but I'm not hugely confident this engine is that resistant to water compared to one in a normal car because it's not designed to get it. Um, but then again, water can get in because the engine cover isn't actually waterproof. So if you, <laughs> that's not waterproof. So I guess it should be okay, but I'll need to be really careful what I do. And once I have washed it, I should really make sure I go out and drive it to make sure it gets warm and dry it, dry everything off. And I can't do that right now because we're on these shitty TT replica wheels. Where are the original wheels? Well, you probably guessed, I think. I wouldn't say they're being refurbished because I didn't curb them. Honestly, I didn't curb them. Uh, I just got a bit fed up with the bronze, really. I didn't hate it or love them in bronze. But recently I've realised that my issue with them is because the car is in Suzuka grey. It didn't actually work that well with that colour. I'd assume because it's, it looks like white to all intents and purposes, it was neutral enough to handle any colour wheel. But actually, that funny bronze and that funny grey didn't seem to work. So I've sent them back to Prestige Wheel Centre and they're doing them in a more, let's say, tr traditional colour for this model of car. There's a little twist to it, which hopefully you will like, and we'll see that when they come back. It probably won't be today. Um, but yeah, so when they come back, I'll put them on the car, then I can pressure wash it, then I can drive it. In the meantime, the trims that were on the engine bay are now not on the engine bay, one's here. Now I was going to send them to a body shop to paint the rusty bit, which you will show, show you a photo of now, but I actually had this silver hammerite in stock for another job, and I just thought I'd try it on a small area, and it went on really well. So I've done most of this now, it needs probably another coat. The tricky bits about these is that they're actually three-dimensional. So if you've got corrosion, it's not just on the top, it's actually in the hole as well. So you have to paint it on top and underneath to get the paint in the hole. The other problem is as well, the metal bit isn't removable from the plastic. It's plastic welded in place, so you'll never get that back. So I'm just doing it in situ, but to avoid getting paint on the plastic, I'm gonna really be very careful with the masking tape. I've already degreased it around here so it's just ready to be applied. That should look really good. I'm going to be quite happy with that because the rusty bit was a bit embarrassing. Uh, I've seen that on some other cars. There's an R8 GT video with uh, Paul Wallace and I think Archie Hamilton where they tested one at um, Redline up in Harrogate. If you look at the engine bay on that, that's also rusty and that's a GT. Anyway, so we'll come back to the cleaning of the engine bay later on when the wheels are here. In the meantime, I'm going to get finishing off the painting on this trim and then we can compare it to the original which is over there somewhere and see if I need to paint that as well to make it match but so far they're looking pretty close but may not be close enough. Let's see how we get on. Then on the driver's side engine bay trim. Let's have a closer look now then. So we're just using Hammerite Silver. It's about seven, eight quid a tin. And it goes a long way, actually. Because you don't really want to put too much on here because you'd end up blocking the holes up. So I'll just peel this masking tape off. Uh, 
okay yeah it looks okay you can see the paint is filling the holes in slightly but you could improve that when it dries with a, a pin just go through unblocking bits is it similar to that side well it's a little bit brighter a little bit more silvery that's a bit duller but it could just be dirty i don't know if in the, in the engine bay you'd actually notice a difference particularly if you're looking at them through a through the glass window anyway so i think it'll be all right to be perfectly honest i'm quite pleased with that so yeah the masking tape works so i've been able to get right down in the edge there was corrosion almost up to the plastic join which made it pretty tricky okay that's yeah job done then next job then is to get the wheels back from prestige get them on the car and then we can start the proper job of cleaning the engine bay okay well it's two days later now and i've got my wheels back from prestige wheel center they're right here they look quite a bit different to how they did when they were bronze i just want to explain why i'm dressed like an eskimo because it's four degrees and it's not stopped raining for about 12 hours it's probably going to carry on for a few more hours it's pretty atrocious out there it's not quattro weather now it's dinghy weather i think i might have to dig out an suv from next door to go home because when i went to prestige some of the roads were pretty bad and it's it's going to have like a few more hours of rain on top anyway on to the wheels so here they are pretty boring but slightly unique so what we've done is we've gone for a traditional audi gray that you might see on quite a few cars this wheel was available in this colour, the grey, on the R8, although you ended up, I think it might have been a bit wider, you got 305, 30 tyres instead. But they didn't diamond cut them. The original wheels were silver and diamond cut, and they just looked silver, they looked a bit washed out on the almost white Suzuka grey car. So what we've done this time is gone a bit more conservative in that there's no silly colours, but we've put our own little touch, which is to diamond cut the areas that were diamond cut before, so the top of the spokes and the rim now there has been one little no actually one major with the process in the in the removal of the tire it's been damaged so because these are low profile tires the sidewalls are really stiff they take a lot of effort to pop them off the wheel and unfortunately this tire is now scrap which is a couple of hundred quid there was a bit of adjustment in the price to allow for it but it's only a it's got about 5.8 mil left on the tread so it's you know not new but it's it's very usable the problem being you've got to be very careful on four-wheel drive cars in particular but probably any car to run the same sort of tread depth on on the axle so you don't can't have a needy new tire or a new tire with a really worn tire so i'm just checking with audi now if the remaining tire which has got 5.8 mil on it will be okay with a new one which will have 8 mil on it so yeah it's a bit of a drag they're a couple of hundred quid each so that costs well not as much of the refurbishment but there or thereabouts anyway these things happen so let's put that to one side now because they're diamond cut also we've gone for a matte lacquer as well that's different and the beauty of that is that they do a gloss lacquer first and then they put a matte lacquer on top so you get two coats of lacquer which as you probably know is quite important with diamond cut wheels because it's the wind on my door sorry they do tend to corrode quite readily much more so than a, a normally painted wheel but to mitigate that we're going to use a protectant so a lot of people give me these sort of super guard packs which they've got with their cars and they've never used so they pay for the super guard treatment but they never follow it up with all the bits and pieces you get so i've used this before it's really easy to use you just spray it on and then rub it on with a, a dry cloth and that's it there's no waiting for it to dry or anything it's just a bit like of an oily sheen on there which is exactly what we need sorry about the wind again okay but before we do that we're going to sort of degrease them because a few marks probably happened when i brought them here so there's some black marks there and there so we want to get those off first we're going to use some auto glim tar and glue the cans actually over there it's just finished uh, which is really good smells way too nice considering how probably toxic it is um, but yeah it works really well as well just apply that with a microfiber so clean them first protect them second fit them last OK, 
Okay, this is now day three. So we've got the car in position to clean the engine bay. We've got the pressure washer there. We've got the car on its correct wheels now, which I will reveal to you later. Because, um, yeah, they look different. And I'm pretty sure you're all going to think better, but we'll see. So what I've done now is not a lot. The car's here as it was when you saw it before, but I've covered up the coil packs with some plastic sheet to stop the water getting into them. One of the worst problems I've ever had with a car I've sold was about eight years ago, I sold a Mark V Golf GTI, lovely car. I pressure washed under the engine bay about three weeks before I sold it. The couple bought it late on a Saturday, I think, and they stopped at Strencham Services about 30 miles down the M5 from here. When they went to fire it up after having their pit stop, the coil pretty much caught fire and took out the loom on the engine bay and they had to have the car recovered here and go home in the car they part exchanged. Obviously I had to repair all that and I had to deliver the car to them in Bristol. And to make matters worse, I had to drive back here in a Fiat Punto. So to avoid that, I always make sure the coil packs are covered. So what we're gonna do now is very carefully pressure wash these grubby areas. I don't think it's particularly well attached this dirt. It's just dust really, it's not like oily. So it should come off quite easily. Before we do that, we're gonna vacuum the crud up from the hinges, which I've been dying to do for ages. So you can see those little pine needles that's from the, the last donor's house. So we'll do that and then we shall get on to the scary bit, which is covering that very expensive engine bay in water. Well, it's got to be done, so yeah, in for a penny. Okay, so I've just quickly done the vacuuming around the hinges and I'm ready to get busy with the pressure washer now. So probably best if I don't hold the camera while I'm doing it because I just need to concentrate very carefully. I also actually need to start the engine. I've been, I was taught that a long time ago that it's always best to run the engine if you're gonna do pressure washing because it just keeps everything moving. It stops water building up in areas where you don't want it to build up. So let's just do that. Press the clutch. Let's hope we don't see any engine management lights on there. Also turn the parking sensors off. Because this car, in my ownership now 11 months, has never coughed at all or anything. I'm probably tempting fate now, but I suppose I better touch some wood. Right. Let's just give it a quick test and see how sticky this dirt is. So let's try the, the header tank. Yeah, not bad. Okay, yeah, I'm going to put this down now and get cracking so you can switch to the camera on there for an eagle-eyed view. Okay guys, well that's the pressure washing done. It didn't take too long because there wasn't really that much dirt and what was there wasn't that particularly well attached to the car anyway. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I've dried it off with a microfiber and then I've been over bits and pieces with um, Autoglim tar and glue remover just to give it a proper clean because I've only been using water. I haven't used any sort of solution on there to loosen the dirt. So yeah, Autoglim tar and glue is pretty good at getting, you know, dirt off really. It doesn't have to be just tar and glue. So there we have it. So yeah, I've avoided the ECUs because they're just a bit too expensive to even risk. They can be a bit dusty, it doesn't really matter. I've done the coolant header tank, the vacuum reservoir. The, these little aluminium bits here look a lot better. I mean, the irony is most of this won't be visible, but at least I know it's clean now. And I've really actually got down into the course panels there. So some of the aluminium 
is nice and white now instead of dirty. So, so much air comes in here to cool the car, like I said earlier, you just get quite a lot of dirt landing on bits and pieces. So, yeah, I think that's taken it back a good 20,000 miles, so that's good. One bit I'm not even sure I'm going to do, it's going to involve a lot of contortion, is to clean that metal heat shield there, the one that looks like it's had a bit of salty water on it, rainwater on it, against the bulkhead, so that's one for the future. But I'm pretty happy about that. Next job is to put the trims in, in the engine bay that are missing, the one that was rusty, we can have a look at those, see what you think of that. And then after that, the most important thing when you're pressing, pressure washing an engine bay is to go and drive the car, particularly in November as it is now, because I just don't want water sitting there, getting into terminals, corroding it, so I just need to go and give it a drive. So it's perfect time to go and put some fuel in. But first, let's get those trims in and see how it looks. Okay guys, well that's the engine bay now back together. The trims are in, very fiddly to put them back in, not least because you're resting the engine cover on your head. But we haven't got any rust now and we haven't got any dirt really, so it looks more like you'd expect for a car of this nature when people look at it through the glass, which they do a lot. Now, if I've used the word detailing in this video before, I apologise because I just haven't had time to do detailing this time. The reason for that is because today's Friday. On Sunday, this car needs to be in Farnborough where there's an R8 meeting. You're welcome to come along. It's at Farnborough Audi. That's a new Audi dealership opened by the Lookers Group. And I think from about 11 to 1, there'll be a meeting of R8s. So it should be big. I mean, any R8s on the road is rare. So if you see like even 50 together, it's pretty cool. And the forecast, thank God, is pretty dry. So yeah, it should be a nice run, a couple of hundred miles round trip. So if you're in the area, come on down, say hello. You'll probably have to spot the car, hopefully. Now let's have a look at the wheels, because you may not spot the car, because the wheels look different. So back on a lovely day in June, I revealed to you the bronze wheels. Today, we're going for something a little bit more sensible. Still, I think, pretty unique. We've gone for a grey, which is like the TTRS Rotor grey. But instead of just having it grey like you can do from the factory, we've gone to diamond cuts on the top of the wheel. Which is funny because the original wheels on this car were a silver with diamond cut, which is a bit pointless. Not only did you not really see the benefit of the diamond cut, it looked a bit washed out on a car that was, you know, pretty much the colour of the wheel. So we've got a bit of a contrast with the bodywork. But strangely enough, and this is more luck than judgment, we've done that thing a lot of people suggested, and that was to match the blade to the wheel. So instead of having the blade bronze, which would be, you know, typical YouTuber style, which I hopefully you'll know I'm not that style, we've somehow managed to match the wheels to the car without touching the blade. So we've got the grey, well, it's called ice silver, but it's a grey, which kind of matches that. And then we've got the polished bits, which is pretty close to Suzuka grey. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It doesn't look as, I don't know, street as it did before, but I think it's a bit more me. And I know people like Lee Bottrell. Hi Lee, I hope you'll like this as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, please comment, please share, please subscribe, and I'll see you hopefully at Farnborough Audi this Sunday, 17th of November from 11 o'clock onwards.